So my last video pissed you off. Well, this one's really going to piss you off. So you don't like my hat? You you think I'm the murderer because I'm wearing this hat, right? Well, how about this hat? this hat trigger you? Talk about the decision to keep the PC closed. Well, that's part of this entire process. This is not a typical, usual homicide investigation. I mean, they all matter. But this one is, is different. And uh, Nick McClellan, the prosecutor here, has been a really good partner and made the decision to attempt to do that, and the judge agreed. So that's all I'm going to say about it. And this is, I think, one of the reasons it has such a global interest is because this is, this is every small town in America. Yeah, and and that's true. Good prevails over evil, not the other way around, and we can't let that happen. They are pointing the finger in a very specific direction as to who's responsible for this, and it's not Richard Allen. And we still don't know exactly who these folks are, um, but this is a small community in, in, in rural Indiana. Members of a pagan Norse religion called Odinism hijacked by white nationalists, ritualistically sacrificed Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Odinism is the pagan religion referenced above, and its followers are called Odinites. Odinists are enamored of Viking Nordic culture. Evidence supports that at the crime scene. Uh, these murdering Odinites left behind obvious signatures, symbols in the forms of runes. These runes were formed with sticks fashioned with tree branches and painted using the blood of Liberty German. Either one of these individuals um, or a group, whatever that might be, that were involved in this, uh, there's multiple ways to resolve this in your mind and in your heart and in your soul. Yeah. And I hope you'll do the right thing one day. But Odin was unable to rest, was to where the others possessed information and power that he did not. We know that this is about power to you. This brings us to another story of Odin and his discovery of the ancient Norse runes. The runes are written letters that were used by the Norse and other Germanic peoples before the adoption of the Latin alphabet. It was known that these runes allowed one to access, interact with and influence the world shaping forces they symbolised. Libby's right arm was placed along the side of her body. One large tree branch had been placed on her left shoulder. This branch was so long that it extended above Libby's head several feet and below her legs for several feet as well. Two smaller branches formed a V where her legs joined her body near her genitalia, with both sides of the V extending upward towards Libby's head, with one branch extending uh, to the left of Libby's head and the other to the right of Libby's head. The last of the four branches extended across Libby's body on a line from her right shoulder to her left shoulder. This fourth tree branch was also connected with the other three branches and was placed under both branches that formed the V. Again, difficult. Libby's sliced neck was partially covered by this fourth branch. Abby was fully clothed. In fact, Abby was dressed in Libby's sweatshirt and jeans. No blood appeared on Abby's clothing. Abby was found on her back like Libby. However, unlike Libby, Abby's elbows were bent with her right and left arms both placed on her chest. Abby's left hand and arm near the left side of her face and her right hand and arm near the right side of her face. Also, Abby's left leg was straight while her right leg was bent at the knee. The murderers also placed her bent right leg under her left leg. 
Above Abby's head were smaller sticks that had been placed over her hair, crudely mimicking horns or antlers. What have you not done really possible already uh, to look into this case? What is that? Is something you haven't done? You know, um, you're going to get into my soul a little bit with a question like that. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you why. I, mean, I want to tell you why. Because of what my eyes have seen and what the eyes of these fellows behind me have seen that you haven't seen. About three quarters of a mile from here. Oh, you. I'm getting pissed off, frankly, for all the reasons we've already talked about. And my soul's getting eaten from the inside out. If I saw the person that did this to them, I don't think I'd be angry, but I, I would just simply want to know why. You know, what were you thinking at that moment in time and how freeing that must be to him once he'd be able to tell somebody that? And I just can't help but to think that it would be uh, an opportunity for him to release what he's feeling inside and, re and trying to, to, to release what he saw in those final moments. Those are the kinds of conversations I'd want to have. It may, it may be unspoken, but you, you would get an answer. In my, in my entire career, I've only seen f now five, soon to be five, I believe, evil people, truly evil. They don't care if you live or die, but even they have had an explanation as to what they did and why. This one's different because I can't explain why. And uh, like we said, when this all started, I owe that explanation to Mike Patty and his family and to many other members of the family. And I'm sorry you remember that club. I really, truly am sorry. Uh, I wish there would have, this could have been something that we could have done prior to that that would have prohibited this from happening, but I guess that wasn't in the cards. We can't allow this kind of evil to live amongst us. Jeff Leggett, or no, Tony Leggett. Introduce a few people that are standing behind me before we get started here. You got Lieutenant Tom McKee from the Indiana State Police Post at Lafayette. Jeff Liggett, or Tony Liggett, sorry, uh, from the Delphi, excuse me, Carroll County Sheriff's Department. I'll get at this right here in a minute. Um, Kevin Hammond. Kevin Hammond from the uh, Carroll County Sheriff's Department. Jeff Liggett, or Tony Liggett. This is my backyard. My backyard just happens to be bigger than most people. How many people have a murder committed at their home in their backyard? I believe if she were able to speak, she would ask people, please give her the one minute she always asked for, to really study the picture and listen to the audio clip. Someone out there knows this person or persons. He's someone's neighbor, coworker, family member, friend, husband, or acquaintance. If and when any new information is released by law enforcement, please take another minute from your day to review all the information and help us collect the pieces of this puzzle. Both of our families are requesting everyone to please help Abby and Libby. Look for someone who's recently changed their appearance, cut their hair, shaved, or started wearing different clothes. Have they changed in some strange manner that just seems a little odd? If you think it could be, but then say, no, he's not like that. 
go with your initial instinct. Let law enforcement run that information and make that determination. However small it may seem, it is extremely vital to capture every tip we can get. Please, we need your help. At this time, I'd also like to thank law enforcement and officials, along with our employers, pastors, the people and businesses of this great community across the state, nation, and beyond, who have pulled together around us, providing help and support in so many ways. From fundraisers, food for our families and law enforcement, to the hugs, handshakes, kind words, all of these items help. But again, we're asking everyone to take one minute and study the picture and audio, then report any information you may have to the tip or email line. We also say thank you for all the generous donations for the reward fund. To the individuals, groups, businesses, all of which are too numerous to name, a couple that stand out are Pat McAfee and Jim Ursay. With their donation, the reward fund is now well over $200,000. The other donations we've received in Libby's name have been utilized to establish a scholarship fund in her name. And, if, and the rest of the funds we hope to be used to build a softball field and park in the memory of the girls so they'll be remembered forever and have something for everyone to enjoy. And, if, and the rest of the funds we hope to be used to build a softball field and park in the memory of the girls. But I'm relying on law enforcement, you know, and, and, and the efforts that they're putting forward. I, I've been, they've been kind enough, they walked me through their process of how they're evaluating this. I'm kind of a process-oriented guy, so they walked me through that. I'm very impressed with, with the, the steps that they go through whenever they receive tips. And trust me, every tip, every call is checked. There's nothing that's just going into a bucket, even if it seems so silly. There's the, the cohesive you know, work between the state police, the county police, the FBI, and the city police, and officers from all over that are coming in is just truly impressive. Uh, you know, I, I truly feel we're gonna get to the bottom of this, and that's why I'm asking for, your, for help out there. Any tips we can get is, uh, is monumental and it could really bring this case to resolution. Thank you. We'll be available for individual interviews if you need so. The Patty family has asked not to be contacted today um, for an interview, but, but they are willing to do that in the future and that should be coordinated uh, through us. Like our main thought was they must have fallen, dropped a phone, maybe they got lost in the woods, they wandered off a little too far and couldn't find their way back. So at that time, me and my uncle crossed the bridge. We got down to the private drive and we were walking around, yelling their names, trying to find out where they might be, hoping that if they had gotten hurt, they would just yell back and say, hey, we're over here, can you help us? I recently watched a movie called The Shack. And there's also a book that talks so well about evil, about death, and about eternity. Uh, what we have publicly addressed is, is people want to make the assumption that the voice saying down the hill it belongs to the person that's captured in the image uh, from the cell phone. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Logan has been the focus of attention from day one. Inside Edition Stephen Fabian interviewed him in 2017. You just cannot believe this terrible thing that happened to the community and the families actually happened here on my property in my backyard. He claimed he had an alibi buying tropical fish 20 miles away. See, I was not home during the, the time that all this was happening. I was in Lafayette. Yeah. And I didn't get home till approximately 6.30 in the evening, and then the neighbor stopped to ask for permission to look back here for the girls. Prosecutor Nicholas McClellan said those accusations are not only dramatic, but false. And he also pushed back on the defense's theory that Abby and Libby were killed 
in a cult sacrifice. In the memo, they accused the case's chief investigator, Sheriff Tony Liggett, of fabricating statements of several key witnesses in order to get a search warrant for Allen's home. Today, McClellan calling the entire memo, quote, colorful, dramatic, and highly unprofessional, defending Sheriff Liggett, saying, quote, he did not intentionally or recklessly omit evidence or lie about evidence to get the warrant. The prosecutor also addressed the defense's claims that there was not probable cause to obtain the search warrant. McClellan reminding the court that Allen admitted he owned the same caliber of gun that was linked to an unspent casing found at the crime scene, had clothing similar to the suspected killer, and was in the vicinity of the Monon High Bridge the day the girls were killed. There were some fingerprints collected. Um, do you know if that, those fingerprints belong to the killer? That I do not know. And same with DNA. You have DNA. Yes. Do you have his DNA? Him, we don't know. He told us that, in his opinion, there are two or three signatures left by the killer at the crime scene. Mm -hmm. And you said you agree in part with that? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, we've been out there, we've been doing, um, going to festivals and, and flyer campaigns, and we've been pushing this picture for two years, and it's the wrong, it's, it's the wrong person. Grandfather Mike Patty said that to protect their investigation, police have not told even him details of the crime. There's, there's one other person out there that's going to know that, and if they keep that stuff close to their vest, that'll help them to kind of weed that information out and be able to figure out exactly who that is when it comes down to the making an arrest. Has there been, have there been any other similar crimes, Doug, similar MOs in the area? Well, we believe that a person that would commit a crime like this with such incredibly evil intent likely has committed that crime before. And with that known, he likely will commit it again. And the, the, the image that we have to America is please disregard the face, but look at the body because anybody could identify a family member by looking at the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm, 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 I'm asking. Can you tell the age of this man? We can't. You don't know, and not even a range. I think a range would be speculative at this point in time. Obviously a grown man. Mm -hmm. Were there any eyewitnesses who actually saw him? No, there were not. Other than obviously the girls. Right. Were there any eyewitnesses who actually saw him? No, there were not. Other than obviously the girls. Right. What are they telling you about the investigation? Um, really not more than what they tell the public, to be honest with you. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. I want to protect the integrity of the investigation. I mean, the most important thing for this, or for us, is to catch this guy. Uh, Becky, do you feel that investigators are any closer today to solving this case? Yes. What makes you say that? Because I have faith in them. I, I, I know they're working diligently. I know they're getting rid of uh, tips, going through all the tips, uh, because we've gotten calls um, on different things. You must have theories about who this guy is. Uh, I think he's a predator, and he isolated these girls on that bridge and took advantage of their innocence and simply murdered them. That's a fact. I have to say, God's got this, and so do the police, and we're gonna do what we can, which is work on our, our park and our ball field. Are you confident this is your guy? The judge signed the probable cause affidavit for the arrest of Richard Allen for two counts of murder, yes. Do you think there are other people involved? I'm not going to go there. There's still speculation out there that um, investigators should still continue to look, even though he's passed away, at Ron Logan, where the bodies were found. We're going to keep doing what we've done until there's nothing left for us to do. We're going to keep doing it. As Mr. Riley stated, we're not going to discuss the, the specific aspects of the investigation today. I've directed all law enforcement uh, to review all requests with me, uh, all public requests uh, before a response is given. That is simply to protect the integrity of the case. My main goal is to protect this case, to make sure that we don't do anything to jeopardize trying this case once we have someone arrested. 
And so in that vein, please be patient with any request that you make. Please understand that when you make a request through law enforcement that they've got to meet with me and we're going to meet as a group and give you an answer if we can. An answer that we can give you that doesn't compromise, again, the integrity of the case. So I hope everyone understands and appreciates that. I hope everybody understands and appreciates the process and hopefully we can work together. Media is an important tool that we can use, an important tool that we want to use. All the tips are greatly appreciated, all the tips. We want to encourage people to continue to call in with any information that they may have. I, I, don't want to, I don't want to end this without saying thank you to the families. Thank you for everything you've done. Right, and so I don't know that that's my role to tell the investigators how to investigate the case. Right, and so I don't know that that's my role to tell the investigators how to investigate the case. I want to be more of a support to them. If, you have a, if we have a resource in my office that you can use, I want to make that available to them. Having said that, I think investigators constantly relook at evidence every day. Is there something I miss? Is there something else I can, I can do? So I, I think that's constantly going on, but in my opinion, it's not my place to give direction to the investigators on how to run the investigation. The effect of what I've got, heard, the armchair detectives who do their own work and start putting up mug shots and social media pictures of somebody who they think looks like the sketch of the suspect. Generally speaking, it's not helpful and it hampers the investigation. With the, the way in which Nick is involved here in this county, the way in which the families of Abby and Libby are involved in this county, that is not helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I guess, uh, I'm confident we're going to solve this case. So I'm confident that if he's listening in or she's listening in or whoever it is, that at some point I will be sitting across from you in the courtroom. And so about all I can say about it, but I'm confident we're going to resolve this case. I'm confident we're going to get an arrest. And I'm confident we're going to solve it. So, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got to take a stab at that. Well, I guess uh, I'm confident we're going to solve this case. I'm sorry, I've got to take a stab at that. But I don't want to touch base or I don't want to talk about the, subsi the specific aspects of the investigation at this time. Can you talk about why it's so important that you guys discuss the integrity of the case? The main reason is for the integrity of the case, right? At some point, this case is going to go to trial or, or come to the courts, and we need to make sure that the case, the integrity of the case is solid. Uh, and so that's the main reason. I'm not angry about that. I, I, again, it might mean that 10,000 people might see this on social media that wouldn't have otherwise seen it. The families rarely pass up an opportunity to keep their loved ones and such a horrible crime in the spotlight. Monday afternoon, I was in Lafayette Aquarium World getting a tropical fish from my aquarium. So when I came home, uh, one of the neighbors stopped and asked permission to come back here and look for the missing girls, and that's the first time I knew anything about it. See, I was not home during the, the time that all this was happening. I was in Lafayette, and I didn't get home until approximately 6.30 in the evening. This is my backyard. My backyard just happens to be bigger than most people. How many people have a murder committed at their home in their backyard? This is the gate they left down. And this is the crime scene down there. See how the ground's much more matted down right in here? I think you're right there as, as to what's happened here. See how the ground's much more matted down right in here? I think you're right there. I think you're right there. What we know is what we know, and we're not ready to talk about that yet. How close are you right now to getting this solved? One piece away. One piece away. Eventually somebody's going to do the right thing. Might be the killer himself. Might be somebody that knows who he is. We can't talk about what we think. Everybody else can, or what they believe happened, we can't. There's been some criticism of me, and I'm, I'm willing to take that. I, I can't explain all the things that I know.
That's because only police and the killer know. He has no idea what we know, um, but one day he will. I can't think of a time in my entire career or in, in many other careers that we have the, the, the voice of the person we believe is the killer, a photograph of who we believe is connected to the, to the murders, and even a, a, a snippet of how he moves. Carter says more information could be released in the future, but for now, this is what we're getting, and he thinks it's enough. Somebody knows. He cautions you to remember the two sketches are not photographs. I believe that eventually we're going to be able to say this person's the killer and there's a combination of those two images that'll land on his face, whatever that might look like. If, if we hit year four, I hope we're sitting here again. But we will do everything within our power and within the parameters of law to find the individual that did this to Abby and Libby. And within the parameters of law. What have you found out? Anything? <laughs> it's a tough one. Huh? It's a tough one. They screwed it up so bad that I don't think their bill's wrong. What do you think they screwed up? Huh? Their investigation. What'd they do? It's concentrated on people who didn't do it. This do anything too much. That's what you think? I know it's what they have. They spent... They were going to pin it on me. It's a shame what happened. I'm not surprised. I thought this would happen. What? Not the murder, but when they put up those trails in... I, in the middle of nowhere, I said, you're going to have all kinds of drug problems and all kinds of crap from this. It's going to draw every deviant in the world to it. I mean, we we walked it a little bit. I was a little scared, you know, because it was just us two. We're not going to do it again, not here anyway. Do you think they're from here? Oh, part of some kind of family for a long time. Did you really? Really. Why did you think that? The area that they were in is very hard to get to. I mean, you, you you can't get there unless you walk there. I mean, so somebody would be walking with them or something. Somebody would be walking with them or something. Today's the day. Today's the day we're going to get closer to the end. Today's the day we're going to get closer to getting justice for Abby and Libby. We have all worked tragic cases, nothing like this. I can't, I can't even put anything close to this case. Well, there's not a day probably not an hour that goes by that I don't think about something. Well, there's not a day, probably not an hour that goes by that I don't think about something. I've choked up a little bit.
There's never going to be true justice for us because you can't bring the girls back. There's never going to be true justice. We believe in law enforcement. We believe in the FBI and everybody else that's been on this case. The murders are drawing international attention with letters arriving from around the world. The girl's death hits close to my heart as I have a granddaughter who is 13. Colorado, Lakeland, Florida, the Netherlands, Australia, from Indianapolis. Although I do not know anyone in Delphi, I would like to give the families this money. These are what we're getting. Denison, Texas, Lafayette, California, Lockport, Louisiana. It's amazing, isn't it? Our hearts go out to you in your time of sorrow. We have children and know how hard this would be if it were our child. Oh, I'd love to meet them. Thank them for the prayers and the support sent with loving memories of your little girl. It's affected lots of kids, a whole school. They all made cards. Here's a Fort Myers, Florida. No, we don't know these people. We've had a, a couple from England. It's quite humbling. They think we're this special. Although I do not know anyone in Delphi, I would like to give the families this money. I would like to give the families this money. They think we're this special. Storefront posters of the suspect are everywhere. There have been multiple fundraisers and vigils. I see beautiful things for, for our park, for our families, for our community to be involved in for years and years to come. Nothing's going to bring them back. Then we can do this to at least have a little piece of them here all the time. Thank you for calling the Indiana Election Division. For our legal team, please press 4. I can't remember a time in my career where we have a photograph, sound, movement, yeah. and um, we're one step away because somebody knows who he is. Yeah. Every family member would know a family member yeah. if they looked at their body without their head. They would recognize the walk, the pants, the jacket, the hood, whatever that might be. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's living in fear and I wish they'd come to me or come to us. I, I really pray just like the superintendent does, this doesn't go 30 years. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't go 30 more days or 30 more minutes, to be perfectly honest with you. We'd, we'd love a, a conclusion right Some, now. Today. Somebody knows. Somebody, somebody does. Somebody knows. Somebody knows. Absolutely. Right. And, and, you know, statistics would tell us that we probably have come across the name, the person, somehow. Uh, because we we this investigation has spanned such a, a broad area. Yeah. Um, but we just, we don't have that one piece. Yeah, and I think once we find out who did this, we're going to think, yep, I yep. So too. Um, I had the opportunity to travel with the family of Dr. Phil in uh, Los Angeles, California. Yeah, He was terrific. Mm -hmm. He was very welcoming. Uh, wasn't sensation. We didn't sensationalize anything. It was, it was, here's what happened in remote rural Indiana, and it could happen in any community in America. And that was a terrific experience. I think it was for the families as well. Then a couple weeks later, we went to the East Coast. And, and talked um, with Megan Kelly. Same thing. I say both give both of those examples, John, because of our. This is an opportunity for us to thank our media partners. Yeah, absolutely. They were they were phenomenal. Oh my gosh, they kept mm -hmm. this out in front. Yeah. We, you know, there's been some criticism specifically of me, and that's okay. Yeah. For the amount of attention that we're giving to Delphi, I uh, Del, We can't compare them. They're all different. Sure. And you know, with nearly fifty thousand mm -hmm. tips on one case, mm -hmm. that makes it different. Absolutely. So uh, kudos to our media partners out there. Uh, sometimes we, we, we fuss and fight with each other like brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, just just like Emmis and what, they're, what they allow us to do here, yeah. um, gosh, yeah. I couldn't be more well, grateful. And, and just recently we're contacted by uh, John Walsh and his show yeah. Pursued, and they're gonna help us with this case as right. well. So. This weekend, Yeah. coming so, up. Uh, you can talk to anybody dressed funny like us. Absolutely. And I hope that they'll do the right thing and get that correct information. Our website, it's alive and well on, yes. our, on our homepage of the State Police website. Um, the Carroll County uh, website, Delphi PD, mm -hmm. um, all of those people that are involved, please, 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 if you're listening to this, 
and you have a bit of information that you think is likely not very important, yeah. it might be to us. Very much. We have a completed puzzle right now. And it's an aerial view of what happened to those two little girls. Yeah. The only thing we're missing is who. Yeah. So, you know, so, you may look at that photo and say, hey, you know, my neighbor used to have a jacket like that. Right. Call us. Absolutely. It doesn't mean that we're going to go kick in his door with a SWAT team. Oh, no. But we need that information. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. You know, we're, we, you said it in an interview the other day, we're one, we're one tip away. Yeah. One tip away. One tip. Great. And remember, we can't give you a response to what we've learned. You know, that's the difference between us. We have to talk about what we know, not what we think. Right. Yes. And and when people, I've heard some criticism about that, and I understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, I've given this all this information, I never hear anything back. Well, believe me, we're keeping all that information. And remember, the sketch is not a photograph. Yes. I believe a murderer is going to have, have similar characteristics of both sketches. Great sure. point. Great point. Yeah. It's only a sketch. It's not a photograph. Mm -hmm. So stay away from a narrow focus of what you see in the face. Yeah. So we won't go into theories or, or concepts. Yeah. The, the, it's simply this. Two young girls lost their lives viciously in Delphi, Indiana. Four young girls lost their lives in a fire in Florida, Indiana. And somebody knows. And somebody knows. Yes. And somebody knows. Suit filed by a Carroll County Sheriff's deputy, Michael Thomas, claims he unsuccessfully ran against the sheriff's choice in next month's election and spoke up early on about problems with the Delphi murders investigation, and now he's paying a price. There are only 12 deputies in Carroll County, and a pair of unsolved crimes, the arson deaths of four little girls in Flora and the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German continue to rock the community. Our county was hurt, you know, and they're looking for someone to fill the position to make the county better. That's why Thomas says he ran for sheriff in last May's primary, but lost to the man Lesenby picked to succeed him. Three days after the election, I uh, was demoted back down to the road. Thomas claims the sheriff targeted him for political retaliation, and he lists his involvement in the Delphi investigation as one reason why he rubbed the sheriff the wrong way. In the very first few weeks double homicide I wanted to bring experts in and uh, I was given that task by the Carroll County prosecutor and basically they didn't like what I had to say it kind of went downhill from there I just felt like there were certain individuals within the command structure that didn't want to go in that direction former Carroll County prosecutor Robert Ives told us today quote I do recall discussing with Chief Deputy Mike Thomas the possibility of seeking additional experts in the Delphi case I thought there were aspects of the investigation that needed experts that the team had not sought. Thomas says his community is frustrated by a seeming lack of progress in solving the Delphi murders and the minimal information revealed. It's law enforcement's job to try to put a stop to some of this stuff because it, it's not doing the case any good. We have new details tonight in the arrest connected to the murders of two girls in Indiana. They were killed nearly five years ago. The case at times seemed almost hopeless. Harley, this could be a big break in the Delphi case. State police in Indiana, prosecutors not saying much tonight, but sources tell our Indiana affiliate that an arrest has been made in the 2017 murders of Libby German and Abigail Williams. A man named Richard Allen was booked in connection to this case. Now they filed a new document that accuses the case his chief investigator of some serious allegations that Carroll County Sheriff Tony Liggett 
fabricated and omitted evidence so he could get search warrants for Allen's home. Now, Allen's lawyers are requesting what's called a Franks hearing in this case. Sheriff Tony Liggett applied for the search warrant in October of last year, and it was signed by Judge Benjamin Diener, who eventually recused himself from the case. Allen's attorneys say Liggett fabricated statements of several key witnesses, who he says placed Allen at the trail during the time that Abby and Libby were murdered. The most serious allegation focuses on another witness who described a man in a tan jacket. Liggett changed that witness's statement to say that they saw a man in a blue jacket and that their clothing was bloody. If you say the officer lied and if you can show the officer lied, then there's really nothing in that affidavit that you can take at face value. Now you're saying to the judge, this entire document was prepared by a liar. What does Allen's defense team say about why they believe Liggett fabricated or omitted evidence? That Liggett did it for political reasons. Search warrant and the arrest of Allen happened less than a month before the 2022 November elections when Liggett was campaigning to be the Carroll County Sheriff. Defense team feels that after more than five years with very few answers, Liggett rushed into accusing Richard Allen to make a big arrest before the election. So when it comes to corruption, there can be no compromise. It must be exposed and rejected at every turn. Uh, it's definitely not a cold case at this point. Uh, we continue to get tips in and they continue to work on I mean, we've had a, over 26,000 tips in this case. It takes a long time to go through those. Uh, law enforcement has been, done, been doing a spectacular job uh, working through all these. And we need to trust law enforcement that they're doing their job. Mm -hmm. and, and they are. We continue to get tips. We continue to get tips. We continue to get tips. They, um, there were several kids there that earlier that day. There were several kids there that earlier that day, and then later on that day, um, they just happened to be there, and there was a law of people being around. Um, so I think they were alone at that particular time, a short span, and somebody took them. That's correct. Of the man, do we believe this man is her killer? I certainly do. Nobody's happy right now. This, this, this isn't good. How long after it, after that was it that you were told? We we found them. Uh, we we found them. Uh, well, th they'd been missing. We'd suspended the search at nighttime. Started up again the next morning, and um, people in and out all day, and new folks coming to volunteer, new helpers, new volunteers from all over, and sent dogs coming in and go get this and go get that. And uh, when the pastor found me, it had to have been about noon, and I just remember the rush of something going on around me and not really knowing what it was. And when he came and said, has somebody come found you yet? And I said, no, I, I, I gotta get off the phone now and da, da, da. And as we walked through the yard and up the stairs, it was like, nobody's happy right now. This, this, this isn't good. I'm confident that we're, we're gonna find the monster that did this. I'm confident we will. There is nothing that we won't do, nothing we're not doing. And um, I was asked earlier, is this gonna go cold? And um, I don't believe it is. I, I believe this will come to fruition. Well, we believe that a person that would commit a crime like this with such incredibly evil intent likely has committed that crime before. And with that known, he likely will commit it again. Has there been have there been any other similar crimes, Doug, similar MOs in the area? Well, we believe that a person that would commit a crime like this with such incredibly evil intent likely has committed that crime before. And with that known, he likely will commit it again. And the, the, the image that we have to America is please 
disregard the face, but look at the body because anybody could identify a family member by looking at the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm, 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 I'm asking. Can you tell the age of this man? We can't. Were there any eyewitnesses who actually saw him? No, there were not. Other than, obviously, the girls. Right. Were there any eyewitnesses who actually saw him? No, there were not. Other than, obviously, the girls. Right. You know, we have seen in a number of cases where names have popped up, names have surfaced, people claiming that that's the guy. He looks like the guy at the sketch, but that really has thrown off this investigation in the sense that investigators have to stop, respond to social media, and in many cases, it's not the person. It really is, and a lot of the issues that they're seeing is where someone on social media will post a picture of that sketch and then a picture of somebody else, possibly completely unrelated, uh, their photo, and say, doesn't this person look like that? And then the tip line gets flooded with more tips saying, I saw this on social media. The one thing the lead investigator said to me, if it's on social media, they already know about it. Uh, so really, people calling and flooding the tip line with those tips that, hey, I saw this picture compared to this picture, doesn't help them because investigators have to look through each one of those tips. They have to sort through 38,000 tips so far in this database system, and that just slows them down as they continue to investigate this. I know a lot of people also question, why haven't they released more evidence? Uh, the lead investigator also talked about that. He says, right now, we don't think we need to release any more information. They say somebody out there specifically knows something about this case that could crack it open. I think people are smart enough in our community to draw their own conclusions about what they should feel and shouldn't feel, and uh, they are able to draw their own conclusions about this whole situation, I think, quite successfully. And people might be wondering if there's somebody running around this community preying on people. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Should people in this community be concerned about someone running around targeting kids? My response is, is no. I feel safe for this community. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, there is somebody out there that did this horrendous crime. But, um, you know, be more mindful and, and uh, watch, watch their surroundings, the environment a little closer. I don't want to discourage anyone from using the system and as far as the trail system. It's, it's there for a purpose for recreation. I feel that folks should continue with business as usual. I'm not real sure, even, even as a sheriff in this county, if we really know how to react or how to respond because, again, we've never had this. And so here we are. So, you know, what's, what's the textbook answer here on responding to this? I'm not sure if there is one. I've been at it for 30 years, and I've never seen this in, in my career. At midnight, the police did call the search off for the evening. We started searching again in the early morning.
we, uh, we, we are doing everything that we can to help the uh, law enforcement. We aren't the type of people to just sit around, so we have uh, tried to spread the word. We send flyers to people. Our goal right now is to get uh, his face out there everywhere in every town that he can't go into a single town that his face isn't staring at him. Because I truly believe, doctor, that somebody out there knows this guy. Somebody knows something. I, nobody lives in total isolation in, in today's world. Right. And I'm asking that person, please help us out. So staying focused on trying to catch this guy uh, is one of the things that helps keep me going. And the thing of it is, is, is like the girls weren't really out there by themselves. There were other kids out there. It, it was a fluke. It was February 13th and it was 60 degrees out. Mm -hmm. You know, so there were many kids out there throughout the day. Right. Um, we've talked to many of them. So they just, it just so happened that they were in a little lull and, and this happened. I spent, uh couple of weeks out here shortly after just scanning the woods and creek banks and looking for clues, items, anything I could find that would possibly help catch this guy. I'm not going to say it didn't happen because I wasn't there that day. I'm not going to say it didn't happen because I wasn't there that day. We probably figured that maybe one of they fell or got hurt or something maybe that they just couldn't or lost her phone uh -huh. you know maybe they fell and, and the phone came out of her hand or something and couldn't answer so we were just looking for them laying somewhere yeah most of the town was out people were out all over the streets of Delphi flashlights walking just groups and, and hundreds you know hundreds of people seemed to be coming out uh, to help us look people split up and went through each finger of that trail system we don't, we don't know which direction he came from or but where he went. Within an hour and 23 minutes of her last Snapchat post, you were there yeah. looking around. Yes. Yeah. Within an hour and 23 minutes of her last Snapchat post, you were there yeah. looking around. Yes. Yeah. We believe that the, that the sketch that you see behind you um, was a face-to-face -face encounter with a citizen of Delphi. Okay, and you've been non-specific uh, about how the the actual crime was committed, the, the manner of death, correct? Yes, yes. And um, because as, as far as the media, that is would be only known to the killer. That is correct. But you do know how it, it occurred, correct? We do, yes, okay. we do. I think to your audience, not just here, Dr. Phil, but around the world, um, this is anywhere America. And these families in that community are absolutely extraordinary. And to see what human beings do when, when others are struggling has been a, the, the highlight of my lifetime. And what I need for people to do in America is trust who we are. And I ask that you please do that. There's lots of reasons not to, and I understand that. But to trust who we are, because if you, as you have so well articulated, somebody talked to this killer yesterday. And what I need for people to do in America is trust who we are. And I ask that you please do that. There's lots of reasons not to, and I understand that. But to trust who we are. There's no monopoly on people that want to come and help with this. We get, we talk to people all the time. We have brought people in. We are doing things. It's, it's not new. I don't think I'm the smartest guy in the room. I don't have all those years of experience. I've solved a couple homicides, but that doesn't mean if someone, if any one of you could arrest the person, I'll gladly go with you. But those people, 
we've talked to, not necessarily the people Mike's talking about, but there are a dime a dozen retired guys out there that we've talked to that want to come and help. Some people we've brought in. So what would you do? What would you change? What would you what would you make happen to try to solve this? I would continue the path we're on. We're on a good path. We have people helping us. There are people out there that really do want to help and have the background to do it. And to put forth an investigative team that will get this murder solved. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you would change the investigative team? Add to it. Okay, thanks. I would continue the path we're on. We're on a good path. We have people helping us. With all due respect to Tony, and all due respect to Kevin Hammond, they were not qualified or trained to accept that responsibility of those two girls that got killed at the time. But you know what it comes right down to? Good old fashioned shoe leather. You've got to make contact with people. You've got to follow up. You can't sit back and wait for something to come to you, that one piece of puzzle that's going to solve that case. You've got to work that case. You know, I've seen flip-flopping going back and forth here. When this case first broke, all I heard was, don't be forming any conclusions on what you're reading or seeing on the internet or on Facebook. Now it's flipped over to where if you've had any contact with somebody on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever, please contact us. What is it? What do you want? You can't be flip-flopping on these things. It's going to take a fresh set of eyes and somebody that knows what is going on in these investigations. Thank you. Back to what Lee was saying, I, I think a new set of eyes is also important. There's many things that have happened in this case that people are confused about. There's been mistakes made, and I'm not criticizing them, but they are there. All of a sudden now, the age, height, weight, all that's been changed. Wasn't supposed to be on there, but it took this many years to find out that that was made up, or that was a mistake. So there's a lot of things that need to be put in place and checked. And I think it's a new set of eyes with experienced people that have been on these kind of crimes before. Can I say something there, Tony? We have the new eyes there. They're working on it, and they're... They're both standing here saying that you have to have the shoe leather. We've done that. We've had the FBI involved, Indiana State Police involved. It's not like it was thrown in just being, me and Kevin Hammond didn't run out of the gate and, and take the bull by the horns. There were several people that were there at the beginning of this case. There's several people there now, and we're working very hard, I promise you. And even the notion, even the notion that there would be even the perception of a cover-up in regards to an investigation involving four little girls is not only unsubstantiated, but ladies and gentlemen, it strikes me at the very core of who I am and the agency that I represent.
A state fire investigator has resigned with little explanation after questions have been raised about the investigation into a fatal fire that killed four girls and injured their mother. Some of the details in this case that have become public are head scratching. Fire investigator Dennis Randall was assigned to investigate the fatal Flora fire, but on Friday resigned abruptly after questions have been raised about how this case has been investigated. The state police who are investigating the criminal side of this arson investigation are also not commenting. Why? Well, the Carroll County prosecutor has asked that the investigative agencies involved in this case refrain from commenting at this time. Neither the state fire marshal nor his chief of staff will talk with us. Now, the Carroll County prosecutor, meanwhile, has asked that all investigating agencies refrain from talking further about this case. So were you aware that there were questions being raised about Dennis Randall's handling of the evidence and investigation into the actual cause and origin of the fire? No, it's not. No, it's not. And as we said, the NAACP got involved in the case and the families call for answers. In fact, leaders of the organization believe the case has been bungled, and they also say police are not updating family members. Nobody's been brought to justice. Um, nobody is talking to the family to even update them on the status of the investigation. But it smells of a cover-up. How are you going to go and have an investigation for almost a year, and it doesn't appear that, that we're any further along on this? But I don't think anything's bothered me more than what's occurred in Carroll County, Indiana, in my entire lifetime. Also remember that all persons arrested are presumed innocent. All persons arrested are presumed innocent. You all will have an innate desire to subjectively interpret and then report what you think. We in the law enforcement realm cannot, and you should never allow us to, talk about what we think concerning facts, but rather discuss and share at the right time what it is we know. The time will come when additional details can be released, but again, today is not that day. It's about Abby and Libby, their families in this community, this nation, and even our planet. The prosecutor has been very clear with law enforcement about what his expectations are, about what can and cannot be released, shared, or discussed. So we will, of course, comply. If you choose to be critical of our silence, be critical of me. I believe in a God of justice and righteousness. Today, I believe that same God has provided us with justice for Abby and Libby. We should be able to see all the documents, right? Sure, yeah, but sure. You made a decision. You explain your decision as to why you believe that maybe for the next 30 days, no one in this room should have access to those records. Sure. It, it is unusual. We don't do it very often um, in all the cases that we handle here in Carroll County. We did it in this case because the investigation is still an o still open. And while all cases are important, this the nature of this case uh, has some extra scrutiny with it. And so we, my office, me, felt it was important to seal those records. Did Ron ever talk about being afraid of heights to you? No. Never. Never. I got him a job where I work at. I work for Lynn Fisher. I got him a job there and it was for maintenance. And he had to climb some of those uh, bins and you measure feed, you know, when they have to be delivered, you know. He had to climb up those ladders all the time. And he had no problem doing that? No, no, that was part of his job. Hours following the girls' disappearance, agents from the FBI and the ICAC task force began extracting and examining digital forensics from the girls' social media and electronic devices. Agents identified an Anthony Schatz profile on Liberty's friends list as a likely fraudulent or phishing profile. While the account had attempted to contact Liberty on at least one occasion, it was quickly determined that Liberty had not shared personal information or communicated regularly with the profile. 
Agents found no evidence of a prearranged meeting and nothing to suggest that either girl had been lured to the trail that day. While investigators quickly ruled out the possibility of an internet crime in the Delphi case, digital forensics from Liberty's social media accounts led them to the fraudulent social media profile. And so, a secondary investigation into the Anthony Schatz profile began. In this 2018 appeal, Crowder states that ICAC was instrumental in working on some of the evidence in the Delphi murders case. Why would ICAC agents be helping with evidence in the Delphi murders case if it was not an internet-based crime? My name is Sergeant Jeremy Pierce, the Public Information Officer with the Indiana State Police out of Lafayette Post. While investigating the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German, detectives with the Carroll County Sheriff's Office and the Indiana State Police have uncovered an online profile named Anthony Schatz. Investigators would like any individual who communicated, met, or attempted to meet the Anthony Schatz profile to contact law enforcement by utilizing the tip email. Indiana State Police have been looking for the person who created the fake social media account, Anthony Schatz. The person tied to that account is in custody in a child pornography case ISP was already investigating. Heavily redacted court documents show no mention of the Delphi murders or any information linking the suspect to the case. As we've been telling you, police asked for help identifying a man who created the Anthony Schatz social media account. Today we've learned that the investigation into that profile is a quote, secondary investigation that came out of the search for Abby and Libby's killer. Troopers are asking you to call this tip line, all the information you see it on your screen, this is different from the line they've been sharing since the beginning. I was hoping to get more details on that, but this is all the superintendent would say. It generated a tremendous amount of interest, and the leads that we've received have been very helpful. State police also acknowledged today that a secondary investigation from information received during the Delphi investigation led them to climb. There's still a lot we here at 13 News don't know about this investigation and we need to be clear police have never said Klein is a person of interest in the Delphi murders investigation. We gleaned a tremendous amount of very positive information and we're continuing to run those tips down. Police identified the man behind that online account as Keegan Klein but now months later they haven't named him as a suspect or a person of interest in the Delphi murders. Now we do know police searched his home 11 days after the two girls were found dead and he was later charged with 30 felony counts, including child pornography possession and child exploitation. All of those charges unrelated to the Delphi. Well, obviously, yeah, we would like to see somebody, you know, uh, um, you know, responsible for this, but I'm relying on law enforcement, you know, and, and, and the efforts that they're putting forward. I, I've been, they've been kind enough, they walked me through their process of how they're evaluating this. I'm kind of a process-oriented guy, so they walked me through that. I'm very impressed with, with the, the steps that they go through whenever they receive tips. And trust me, every tip, every call is checked. There's nothing that's just going into a bucket, even if it seems so silly. There's the, the cohesive you know, work between the state police, the county police, the FBI, and the city police, and officers from all over that are coming in is just truly impressive. Uh, you know, I, I truly feel we're going to get to the bottom of this, and that's why I'm asking for, your, for help out there. Any tips we can get is, uh, is monumental, and it can really bring this case to resolution. Thank you. There is a lot of crime scene evidence. Uh, some of it is somewhat odd, but, but when I say that, any murder scene tends to have odd facts about it. I mean, in real life, obviously, people don't kill people really all that often. And this crime scene, there's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of unique facts there. And honestly, I'm shocked, and I promise you the police are shocked, that it wasn't solved in a day or two because it just didn't seem we're not used to in rural Indiana. Normally if person A murders person B, it's obvious who the suspects are. And usually it's pretty obvious how to prove they committed the crime. This crime is very strange. He is innocent. We are anxious uh, for the public to read this. Is this what 
happens after five years of an investigation. Is this what it is? We don't have any other evidence. We don't have any discovery. That's all we have, and we are not impressed. Who's the lead investigator, though, on this? Is it Carroll County? Is it you guys? Yes. Is it all over? Yes. It's a task force. We've been a task force from the very beginning. This is a, this this event happened in the, in Carroll County, of course, but we've been unified since the very beginning, and we'll maintain that. FBI too. Are they still involved? FBI and all federal agencies are continue to be available to us. And this is, I think, one of the reasons it has such a global interest is because this is this is every small town in America. Yeah? And and that's true. So my last video pissed you off. Well, this one's really gonna piss you off. So you don't like my hat? You, you think I'm the murderer because I'm wearing this hat, right? Well, how about this hat? Does this hat trigger you?